would present three more cases if you have enough time. Can I present? Uh, it was not uh, on the website, but yes. I think that uh, these can have some relevance. Okay. So this was a hypothyroid patient. Would anybody comment this case? So here is uh, one part of the thyroid. Here's another type with part of the thyroid. Uh, uh, the presence of connective tissue divides the thyroid, not infrequently to discrete, in this case, larger parts. But naturally, not this and not that one is the problematic, but this one. Uh, this proved to be papillary cancer, uh, and uh, our greatest help is the presence of microcalcification. I go back. Yes. Uh, so, uh, if we compare that and this part of the thyroid, the only relevant difference is the presence of microcalcifications. And this led uh, us uh, to recognize this papillary cancer, which naturally was not microcancer, it was quite a large size. Comments? Questions? Here is a... I think here is a suspicious lymph node next to the thyroid. Does anybody have comments? Questions? Um, so, we don't have a question. Please. please? Uh, uh, what is the association between papillary carcinoma and Hashimoto's thyroid disease? Okay, we have a great expert here. <laughs> Gabor Kovac, are you here? Gabor Kovac is an uh, excellent colleague uh, who wrote his PhD dissertation about this problem. Gabor, are you here? No, Gabor is not here. So uh, I think uh, that is uh, clearly uh, the clear data that that uh, the risk of papillary cancer is higher in the event of lymphocytic thyroiditis. Uh, the issue is what is the cause and what is the consequence. Uh, I don't think that the coincidence, based on a simple coincidence, we can uh, define what is the cause and the consequence. And I have one consideration. Uh, almost all hypothyroid patients has Hashimoto's thyroiditis. If Hashimoto's thyroiditis would predispose to papillary cancer, then it would be a great catastrophe and we would meet much more papillary cancer cases. Be aware that around 10% of women have to be treated during their lifetime for primary 
hypothyroidism caused by Hashimoto thyroiditis. So I'm quite convinced that this coincidence, okay, it is present this coincidence, but uh, Hashimoto thyroiditis uh, cannot be taken as a predisposing factor. But I know that there are different opinions. Other, other opinions to this question? No other. If I may say, uh, yes, please, please. Thing, when you look at the reports, it, it totally depends on the uh, gold standard that it is that is used. That is to say, if you refer to reports that are based on surgery and then histology, uh, certainly uh, there are much more much uh, many papillary carcinomas in chronic uh, thyroiditis and then if you refer to reports that are based on cytology uh, there is no increase in the incidence of papillary carcinoma so my point of view is that probably there is a, a surgical bias and that there is no true increase in uh, the risk of papillary carcinoma in the presence of uh, chronic lymphocystic thyroiditis because here <laughs> if i may add something uh, we have uh, a slight disagreement because in france we have a very uh, orthodox uh, way of naming uh, hashimoto's disease Hashimoto's disease is mandatorily associated with a goiter because in the early uh, 20th century when Hashimoto described the disease it was including a goiter and rather huge goiters. Now what we see in our daily practice is not Hashimoto's disease. It is chronic thyroiditis, lymphocytic thyroiditis, with normal to subnormal uh, thyroid size. That's the, the main ones by far. And by times to times, we see the true Hashimoto's disease. Probably they have more, many more in Japan than in Europe, uh, these uh, true Hashimoto's disease. And when we're speaking of the true Hashimoto's disease with a large goiter, I would be more defined on the risk of having a true papillary carcinoma also. So I follow the true Hashimoto's disease in another way, more closely than the chronic lymphocytic thyroiditis, which I think need no US surveillance at all. But the true ones with goiters and deeply, markedly hypoechoic thyroids and highly vascularized one, I think the, the risk of having a papillary carcinoma or a lymphoma is slightly elevated, slightly. That's my comment. Okay, thank you. Uh, there is another definition. Uh, pathologists uh, discriminate between lymphocytic form and uh, Hashimoto's form or Hashimoto's or non-Hashimoto's form of autoimmune thyroiditis based on the presence of oxyphilic cells. So a pathologist uh, does not uh, uh, tell the uh, phrase Hashimoto if uh, non-metaplastic mm -hmm. cells are found in the thyroid. Mm -hmm. uh, but I wish to raise your attention to this pattern. So mm -hmm. this is uh, in fact a diffuse form of uh, lymphocytic thyroiditis. Uh, we mm -hmm. cannot see discrete lesions. Uh, this uh, connective tissue divides uh, into three parts of the thyroid, and the only chance recognizing uh, this uh, 
part of papillary cancer with the presence of uh, uh, microclassification. So, so this part is very similar to that, and to that, the only exception is the presence of microclassification. So it, uh, it, I think that this is a very edifying uh, case. Uh, okay, here is a discrete lesion, and here is another one, but the entire part, which proved to be papillary cancer, uh, differs only in the presence uh, of uh, microclassifications. Uh, I sent this uh, image uh, into an artificial intelligence study, uh, which is conducted by U.S. Uh, uh, university, and they refused to include this case because uh, uh, the artificial intelligence uh, program did not disclose uh, this part as a nodule. <laughs> so, uh, so I think this 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 pattern uh, it is very defying the presence, and this is not a five millimeter lesion. This is uh, almost three centimeter in maximal diameter. Uh, and the presence of microclassification was a clue. And, and the vascularity, if I may say so, I think uh, it's it's around the nodule. It, yes. it shapes the nodule, I think, yes. too. Uh, it, here, uh, intralesional or intratyroidal vascularization, but here is uh, the vascularization within this uh, papillary cancer quite scanty. Yes. In contrast with that part, uh, this uh, intra nodular intra papillary cancer vascularity we cannot see. So uh, it is again a quite uh, deceptive uh, uh, pattern regarding uh, the vascularity. So here within the thyroid, there are vascular pattern circulation, but here, okay, I can stop. But the main part, the predisposing, uh, is the perilegional or peripheral vascular time. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have two more cases. If you have patients, uh, 84, which you see, 84? Mm -hmm. Yes? Okay. Yes. I start with the video. Okay, so the left lobe is the interesting one. This patient was also a hypothyroid patient. Mm -hmm. What you guess? What was the result of cytology? Papillary cancer. Deeply hypothyroid. Please? Deeply hypoechoic and irregular borders. Okay. As a result of cytology? Okay, if I, so I do, did not perform, so uh, it is one I guess. Yes, it, it proved to be again a papillary cancer. This is another presentation, and this is uh, again uh, quite relatively large um, uh, tumor. Not a five millimeter in maximum diameter. Here is the largest diameter I, I know. From here to that is one centimeter. It, it was, I think, uh, 12 millimeter in maximum diameter. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the ultrasound signs of extra thyroid spread? I cannot hear you. So the capsule is discontinuous. Uh, this nodule bulges. Mm -hmm. 
and is in close contact with the thyroid, as in almost all cases of papillary cancer. So uh, it is very difficult to rely on the ultrasound signs uh, on uh, in the event of papillary cancer. But again, uh, the presence, I, I go back to some point. So these hyperechoic spots are much larger than this one, which is the presentation of connective tissue here and here. These are again microcalcifications. Mm -hmm. So uh, this case points uh, to another uh, help or task uh, in a case which differs in the size of hyperkick lesions. So if you see in the right loop, there are many discrete lesions with few millimeter in maximal diameter, but this was a much larger one. Mm -hmm. so, and this was the only uh, discrete lesion which exceeded one centimeter in diameter. So this is another uh, uh, help, another factor which can help us uh, to reveal papillary cancer in Hashimoto's patients. Questions, comments? If not, I present my today last case. 88? Yep. Okay. So for the sake of less, ex less experienced colleagues, in most cases in which papillary cancer and uh, Hashimoto thyroiditis coexist, uh, uh, we have not great problems. Uh, it is much more frequent to uh, find papillary cancer uh, in such a form. So uh, I uh, presented several cases in which uh, real differential diagnostic problems arise. But uh, in most cases, uh, we have less problematic patterns, and this is more to the average uh, situation than uh, the previews which were presented. So this is a large papillary cancer presenting numerous microcalcifications. So it, it clearly it is clear that, that this is a very suspicious modulon ultrasound presentation. Comments to this case? If not, I finished my presentation, but I have one more um, uh, organization uh, issue. Uh, so um, I get very uh, limited number uh, to the exams. So I present you, there are six exams uh, which have to be answered uh, to fulfill the course. Uh, four of them are related to nodular goiters. For example, borders of the nodule, you click on exam, and here you uh, write your email address and password. This uh, was sent to you at the beginning of the course. If someone uh, has forget, 
forgotten forgotten about uh, his or her password, please write me an email and I will send you. So after login, uh, you can start with the exam and you have to answer 75% correctly from the 20 cases. You can repeat the exam. I uh, will be informed only if you passed the exam. And there were some questions. If uh, someone uh, wants to play or, or, or for amusement, uh, everybody can repeat the exam even if he or she passed. Uh, one cannot lose a successful exam. But uh, as uh, I uh, mentioned, uh, to pass the six exam, exams uh, is the prerequisite uh, to fulfill the course. 